హాయ్ డాక్టర్ కుమార్ కొత్తపల్లి గారు సో వెల్కమ్ టు ద షో అగైన్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఐ హ్యావ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ జెనెటిక్స్ రిలేటెడ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ టు యూ సో బికాస్ యూ హ్యావ్ బీన్ డూయింగ్ రీసెర్చ్ ఆన్ జెనెటిక్స్ సైడ్ ఫర్ వైల్ సో ద ఫస్ట్ మోస్ట్ థింగ్ ఈజ్ లైక్ బిఫోర్ వీ గో టు అవర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ సో ఇన్ యువర్ ప్రీవియస్ ఇంటర్వ్యూస్ ఐ సా దట్ యువర్ రీసెర్చ్ హ్యాస్ హెల్ప్డ్ అ లాట్ ఫర్ దీస్ బర్త్ డిఫెక్ట్స్ so can you please uh, explain a little bit about it and also like uh, how these birth defects are related to the close relation marriages okay thank you srinivas garu so uh, what uh, your question is about like congenital anomalies that means uh, they are uh, you know most of the kids they are by birth they are having some genetic uh, defects especially in india if we see uh, there are a lot of uh, close relative marriages what we call as consanguineous marriages that means first degree first cousin marriages second cousin marriages so when we have those kind of marriages uh, we see a lot of autosomal recessive disorders in the indian cohorts especially we are uh, uh, talking about congenital anomalies in india like uh, recent data shows uh, 184 births per 10000 live births in every 10000 live births 184 are congenital anomalies so especially when we see the congenital anomalies uh, we come across like a lot of uh, heart defects congenital heart defects musculoskeletal defects so cleft lip cleft palate these are the defects what we see in uh, uh, genetics and uh, when we are talking about genetics uh, the normal humans have 46xx is a female and 46xy is a male and when we talk about this congenital heart defects the chromosome 4 chromosome 7 chromosome 8 chromosome 20 and chromosome 22 these are the five chromosomes which have micro deletions which are linked to congenital heart defects Uh, the other one is this G6PD deficiency. So it is uh, nowadays well reported in India. Okay. So as a geneticist, so what is your take on soya bean products and soya oil? Is there any relation between this, I mean uh, soya products and G6PD deficiency? Uh, it's a g- good question, uh, Srinivaskar. so g6pd deficiency happens in places where there is a malarial endemic regions so in india if we see like uh, 8.6% of uh, indians live in tribal populations these are the tribal areas where we see a lot of malarial uh, endemic uh, population is so whenever there is g6pd deficiency and uh, we uh, feel like you know if these individuals are on fava beans they are uh, kind of a beans like and the soy beans they might develop like oxidative stress and hemolytic anemia so whenever we are introducing these soy beans to population like india in this especially the tribal populations i would say like uh, professor tom brana is an expert in nutrition and these are the uh, the suggestions what we need to give to those populations before introducing soy to those uh, uh, particular tribal areas and uh, if we see in nagaland there is a tribe called naga where this g6pd deficiency the percentage goes up to like 27% so these are the areas you know we should be extremely careful uh, while introducing uh, soy products so what you are suggesting is first we need to create the awareness about the soy products and then uh, introduce it to the t- tribal areas so my suggestion is uh, like you know uh, we should be extremely careful uh, if the population is a g6 if we identify like a particular individual is g6pd deficient we should not put them on the soybean diet so there are uh, uh, mutations we have identified in g6pd deficiency in the particular gene and there are biochemical assays which will easily identify if a person is g6pd deficient or not and the uh, other one like uh, what would be the symptoms for this g6pd deficiency so g6pd deficiency uh, is a, a enzyme defect mm-hmm. 
like uh, if if we if the people who are in this deficiency they might uh, if we put on their soybean diet they might develop like hemolytic anemia anemic uh, conditions so we should be extremely careful uh doctor kotpal garu so there is a question like uh, in general what would be the symptoms for g6 pd deficiency so the symptoms are, are like a uh, chronic fatigue and these individuals they are uh, very um, prone to hemolytic anemia so once these individuals uh, even the kids if they are chronically fatigued and they are having any dizziness we need to test them for uh, uh, this kind of g6 pd deficiency in this tribal populations and once we identify that these people are g6pd deficient we need to avoid uh, soy products in their diet or you know fava beans in their diet why because it might be more harmful to them and they might go into like uh, you know uh, a lot of hemolytic anemia stress and they might even uh, die so uh, the other one is like uh, in 2016 both of you have published a genetics paper okay that went uh, viral worldwide so i mean could you please uh, tell us more about that paper and why it is that much viral it's a thank you so much and i am very excited to answer this question because me and dr prana are working on uh, this omega 3 fats balance especially for the past 14 years myself 14 years with him and he is in the lipids field for like uh, or 35 years so this omega 3 balance uh, when it comes to uh, omega 6 and omega 3 when we evolved as humans we evolved with 1 is to 1 ratio and then in india if we see large population is vegetarian diet they are on vegetarian diet so we both got interested to see how the genetics of one particular gene called fatty acid desaturase 2 we identified a uh, 22 base pair insertion deletion polymorphism in 2011 that means polymorphism means a genetic variant so there are two types of uh, common genetic variants one is snp snp means single nucleotide polymorphism means only one base change in the dna or insertion deletions means there is an insertion of some dna bases or deletion of some dna bases so when we did this study what we found was uh, the insertion allele of this 22 base pairs in indian population is 70% whereas when we did the same dna in us it was only 18% so that was the main basis of this uh, polymorphism and i will give it to dr brana for uh, well well thanks and the the, the consequences and you you can think about these polymorphisms as almost different colors so so there's a lot of complicated stuff but um blue and green and if you're blue you have one metabolic uh condition and if you're green you have the other one so one versus the other and 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 what um we and our collaborators also uh uh discovered was that uh depending on let's say the color which polymorphism um it, it was uh, 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 w- one color or the other would be an advantage based on the diet of our ancestors if our ancestors were vegetarians uh and ate very little meat and very little fish then one of those polymorphisms would be predominant whereas the opposite if, if our ancestors ate more meat and fish then the other one would be predominant and that told us that this is a key place in the genome that has implications for what we living people not our ancestors we living people uh would eat for best health if our genes are tuning us to be vegetarians then 
uh, and, and in a certain kind of vegetarian, not a vegetarian of maybe 2018, but a vegetarian of 1,000 years ago, uh, the diet from then, um, are that our, our genes are tuned for that health, for that diet to have best health. And that's what this developing science that we call nutritional genetics or nutrigenetics is all about. That is, understanding what our individual makeup uh, is all about and how we can optimize our health through food. So both of you have published the paper about uh, how that genetics help in this diet. Okay, so that's really great. So, like uh, in especially in Indian population, nowadays we are seeing lot of diabetic complaints. So, how is it related to genetics? Uh, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, diabetes is a, uh, it's not a single gene disorder like what we call as a Mendelian disorders or single gene disorders. But this gen diabetes is uh, complex. That means, uh, you know, environment play a role along with the genetics or the genes. So the studies are going on. But if we have like both the parents are affected, then we have like 50% chance of getting uh, uh, diabetes in the kid. So my uh, take as a genetist is uh, like uh, we should be very careful in our diet what we are eating. and the genetics is the secondary part when it comes to the diabetes. But when when we see like uh, another kind of uh, uh, diabetes called MODY, MODY means M-O-D-Y, it's mature onset of diabetes in young. There are like seven kinds or seven types of this MODY and these uh, MODY disorders are all highly genetic. But not the type 2 diabetes, you know, we need more answers for that. So now the uh, genomic studies are going on. Maybe in another 15 or 10, 10 to 15 years, we might see some genetics connection coming up. But me and Tom Brana has worked out on uh, uh, fat content of uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. And this American Diabetic Association, they suggest taking omega-3 fatty acids. So we did a study uh, with the cells, not in human, but cell, cell culture, where we used the saturated fat which is palmitic acid, uh, 16 carbon fatty acid. And then we uh, tested polyunsaturated fatty acids. And there is a competition between saturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. So what we uh, are saying is correcting local deficiency omega-3 might benefit uh, diabetic patients. Any, any, any take uh, from Dr. Uh, my first thought was that it is a complicated thing, but as it is rising in, in India and it is also at epidemic proportions in China as well, it is more than likely something that we have done with our diets that has, because our genes haven't changed, but our diets have changed dramatically. And in, I think one of the biggest things in the diet, maybe the biggest thing in the diet that's changed is the fats that we're now supplying. And that's where I think we ought to be looking. So let's get that right. Let's look at people who are, who are uh, consuming traditional fats because we didn't have these problems when we were just doing traditional fats. I think we, 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 have, to, we have to understand what's going on. I don't want to get rid of all technology. Far from it. I just want to make sure the technology is right. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, uh, nowadays, heart disease is also going very high. Even um, like uh, very little age, the people are getting affected for these heart attacks and other heart diseases. So, is there any connection between uh, heart diseases and diet, or heart diseases and genetics? So. I can answer the genetics part. So if we see in India, like uh, there is a study conducted from uh, University of uh, California in San Francisco. It's called uh, MASHALA, M-A-S-A-L-A study, which shows that in South 
Asians, if you see the data, like 60 percent of the heart diseases are in that uh, region. That means recently or you know the data coming from the past 50 to 60 years, it shows that these uh, uh, heart disease rates are increasing tremendously in South Asia, especially in Indian uh, population. One thing uh, as Dr. Brunner suggested, the diets are uh, one thing, but coming to the genetics, there are because of uh, uh, these uh, consanguineous marriages or close relative marriages, we have a lot of uh, autosomal recessive disorders in India. And when coming to this cardiomyopathies, cardiomyopathy is the defect in the car heart muscle, there is a definitely a genetic connection. And 4 percent of Indians, there is a big study uh, conducted uh, in 2009 showing that 4 percent of Indians, they have a genetic mutation in a gene called MYPBC3. And when we have this mutation, this is not an association study, it is a causal mutation. So in genetics what we say is uh, association and causal. Causal genetic mutations are pathogenic. So we need to be very careful between studies which show association and which show causation. So we need to be very careful in, in figuring out those studies. But this study says that this particular mutation is causal in Indian population and this mutation is in the Indian population for over 30,000 years. And when, when it comes to like uh, aneurysms, aneurysm is the dilatation of the heart ar arteries. There are certain genetic diseases called Marfan syndrome, it is highly genetic and uh, uh, some kind of erythemias like uh, Brugada syndrome and uh, short and long QT syndromes, they are all highly genetics. So there are some uh, data coming up now like pathogenic mutations are identified in these uh, uh, diseases even though they are rare, but if one of the uh, uh, family members die or you know sudden heart conditions, sudden death, then we should suspect these conditions and go and screen for these conditions and there is a lot of genetics going on now on these disorders and we need to be careful once we identify these pathogenic mutations, we should get help or else we will lose these patients. Okay. Yeah, so I think like um, I got uh, so many questions answered and then uh, got m many clarifications. Okay, so it is really like uh, very happy to meet both of you and get so much knowledge about uh, this genetics and then the facts about fats, <laughs> all these things. And also I think our viewers also got a lot of um, answers for this and if at all you have any more questions you can comment our video and then uh, we are welcome here all the comments and then we are ready to answer your questions through our experts. Thank you, thank you so much, thanks for watching this video. Thank you so much Srinivas Garu for giving this, uh, you know, coming to Dell Medical School and uh, having an interview with us and uh, thanks to Desi Plaza team. And, and thanks for me, it's wonderful to have you here and I, I hope you'll uh, come back sometime again. <laughs>